so many people say to me, don't make me give up my coffee. What's so bad about coffee? I thought coffee was full of antioxidants that stave off inflammation and boost my metabolism. So what's the truth? Black gold or black death? Hmm. Well, let's just say it's not doing your adrenals any favors. And hormones are king, rather queen, especially once you hit 40. Black gold. I'm not talking fossil fuel. I'm talking coffee. The brew. The aroma. Truly black gold. Well, it's only black until I get my hands on it. Then it's more like Hawaiian earth. I add an inch of cream and a heaping spoon of honey or xylitol or just plain old cane sugar, organic please, and voila, I have what some people have called a hot coffee milkshake. Call it what you will, it's delicious. And until about six months ago, I couldn't live without it. But now I know I must. Coffee is not the simple little roasted bean you think it is. Sure, it's handsome, smells great, but it's chock-a-block full of over 700 substances, including 200 acids, many alcohols, and other good time ingredients like caffeine, everyone's favorite. Many of these thingamaboos lead to digestive upset, adrenal fatigue, high blood pressure, and never mind the pesticide residues. If you don't drink organic, please do, because poison sucks. So let's talk caffeine. It's a psychoactive drug, hence coffee's immense popularity. Humans love their altered states, don't we? And decaf coffee still contains caffeine and all the other substances I just mentioned. How much? Well, the average cup of joe has between 95 to 200 milligrams of caffeine, and a cup of decaf brew falls between 9 and 14 milligrams, unless it's Starbucks. Then it's about 28 milligrams if it's a venti. A chocolate bar might have five milligrams as a comparison. So it's still there. The caffeine is still there. Besides that, decaf coffee is chemically altered and degraded. So you lose the few benefits coffee offers, like antioxidants. To make it worse, studies show that decaf coffee drinkers have a higher incidence of rheumatoid arthritis. Fabulous. There goes that decaf loophole. Trust me, I tried to work that angle. Back to caffeine. What's the problem? Well, caffeine equals stress. And last time I checked, no one I know needs more stress. Stress, in case you're an alien, is ugly. It makes you anxious, shaky, grumpy, mood swingy, irritable, and just plain poopy. And it leads to degeneration and aging. Blech. There's even a thing called the stress age syndrome, in which the brain, endocrine, that's your hormones, and bioenergetic systems all start to fail thanks to that six letter word, stress. Kind of makes you want to get rid of anything that causes it, don't it? Also, caffeine and stress hormones, adrenaline and cortisol, drive down levels of DHEA and human growth hormone. These important youth hormones are already on decline from about age 25 onwards. Thank you, God. Which is a major bummer because they're the ones that keep you lean, mean, and youthful. DHEA is called the vitality hormone for criminy's sake. We want to keep it. By age 70, you're producing only about 15% of prime peak DHEA. And 70 is not that old, especially if you're a Hunsen. Trust me, you don't want to hasten the decline of your youth hormones. Hunsens didn't, and they're world-famous centenarians. In time, stress and caffeine create adrenal exhaustion. And that looks like this. Blah. Sucks. I always say don't mess with hormones. Support your endocrine system any way you can. Now let's talk about GABA. I love GABA because it is this amazing neurotransmitter that calms the mind without putting you to sleep. It helps you filter the noise to make good decisions. It's the opposite of frazzle or adrenaline, which is stimulated by ingestion of caffeine, of course. This disrupts the normal metabolism of GABA so you can no longer step back and see the world clearly, especially when under fire. So all you coffee makes me alert folks, that's great, you're pinning, but you may not be thinking clearly. Now, what about blood pressure? It's fact, caffeine increases your blood pressure even in moderate doses to the level of borderline hypertension, and not just temporarily. It also causes vascular resistance. That's where your blood vessels constrict and blood flow is restricted. Have you ever noticed how your fingers get cold after you drink a cup of coffee? That's vascular restriction caused by the stress response. Your body does so because if you're attacked by a tiger, this will reduce blood loss from injuries. A good thing for all those bear maulings. Don't want to bleed out. Now what about cholesterol? 
They said eggs were the problem. Ha! That's a joke. Studies show coffee, including decaf, is associated with higher cholesterol and can increase in direct proportion to coffee consumed. There are two other chemicals in coffee, aside from caffeine, that create this effect. Two other chemicals. They're called cafestol and cowiol. Probably not saying that right. Doesn't matter. Just know that stress and coffee can most certainly increase your risk of heart attack or stroke. Genetics play a role, yes. There are many factors. I'm just saying if you're prone to any of those killer diseases, then you should truly ditch coffee, especially if you have cardiac arrhythmias. Yikes. Now, what about your liver? Well, your liver is the only organ that detoxifies caffeine from your system. And when you drink coffee, an enormous amount of caffeine is dumped into your bloodstream and absorbed rapidly by every organ and your various fluids, like saliva, semen, breast milk, and right across the blood-brain barrier. Plus, there are other chemicals in coffee aside from caffeine, as mentioned, including some pretty little toxins called polycyclic ar aromatic hydrocarbons. Say that 60 times. They're the same cancer-causing little devils isolated from barbecued meat. Every meat-eating man just groaned. Don't shoot the messenger. The liver must detox those as well. This sounds easy like the body can just take this endless assault. But caffeine breaks down into 25 different byproducts, and each of these metabolites has its own biochemical effect on the body. I'm exhausted. Now do you get me? Not so good for you. And trust me, I am, was, as depressed as you are. I like coffee better than my husband. So yes, it's depressing. And I didn't even get into how coffee leaches important minerals from the body like calcium and magnesium and what it does to your gut biome. That's not good news. Cave women did not have coffee, and we have the same biological makeup as them. Yes, you, me, and a 25,000-year-old woman. We're the same, except maybe a little hotter, less hairier, you get me. Our genetics have not kept up with our modern processed diets, and that includes coffee. Sorry. So what to drink instead? Matcha, cocoa, herbal tea. Save coffee for your once-a-week treat, like a glass of wine. Email me, and I'll send you my matcha recipe and soon-to-come matcha mud mix. Go to the 40girlsguide.com. Guide.